got out my Morton's and Math blocks one day, and I really started paying attention to how pretty and attractive this nine was. It's this wonderful mint green, and it's so nice and tall. I started talking to it. Boy, you are such a pretty, pretty color, and you're so nice and tall. It must be wonderful being a nine. You know what? The nine talked back. Yeah, it is nice being a nine. I like being tall. I'm taller than most of the other blocks. But you know what? I really, really would like to be a 10. Why would you like to be a 10? Well, I'm a unit bar. And you know, 10s are the next largest kind. I really would like to be a 10. Can you help the 9 out? Let's get our tray and let's put a 10 there. 9 wants to be a? You're right. 9 wants to be a 10. What does 9 need to be a 10? 9 needs a 1. Ah, that's it. 9 with a 1 makes 10. And why does 9 want to be a 10? Because it's the next largest kind. Well, I ran into an 8. I started talking to the 8. Now look, what do you see and what do you think of when you look at that 8? It's that nice chocolatey brown color. Boy, I bet you're just so happy being an 8. People must really like you. And the 8 said, yeah, people do like me because I'm that chocolate color, color. And you know how many chocoholics there are in the world. Yeah, I'm pretty popular. but." I really would like to be a 10. You know, 9 said the same thing. Why do you want to be a 10? Because I'm a unit bar, and I want to be the next largest kind. I want to be a 10. Can we help the 8 out? Here's an 8, and 8 wants to be a 10. What does 8 need to be a 10? Can you tell? It needs 2. And guess what? Do you know what 7 wants to be? Right. 7 wants to be a 10. What does 7 need to be a 10? 7 needs a 3. Yeah. Now, why did 7 want to be a 10? Because it's the next largest kind. Can you guess what 6 wants to be? You're right. I can't fool you, can I? And what does 6 need to be a 10? Six needs a four. Young children love this. Can you hear them giggling over this? And when you hold up the five and say, what does five want to be? There's not going to be any hesitation, right? Five wants to be a 10. And what does five need to be a 10? They're seeing the pattern now. Five needs a five. The tray, self-correcting. And it's so easy for them to see this. Please note that I started with a 9. Now, why would I start with a 9? Because when we had that 1 missing, it's very obvious, right? The child cannot fail because that's the piece that goes there. And it's real easy for them to see that just the 1 is missing. And now we can continue on with this. Think about fun games that you can play with this want to be a 10. You can make up a shopping game. If you're working with a small group of students, hand them some pieces. So imagine that one child has this bar, another one has, oops, I want to use the positive ones, this one, another one has this, and another child has this. And they're holding it in their hands like this. You can't see it. But the child can look and see. Now, you hold up a 9 bar, right? What does the 9 want to be? A 10. What does the 9 need to be a 10? A 1. So what is 9 going to shop for? A 1. Now, a child's holding this in their hand. Do you have a 1? No. Another child, do you have a 1? Yes. Oh. Nine's found a one, and nine with one make what? Ten. And nine is so happy because nine with a one makes ten. 
Suppose that eight were out shopping. What does eight want to be? A 10. What does eight need to be a 10? A two. What's eight going to shop for? A two. What is eight looking for? A two. Do you have a two? No. Do you have a two? No. Do you have a two? No. Boy, I hope I can find a two soon because my feet are getting really, really tired from all the shopping. Let's check the next door. Do you have a two? Yes. Now, eights has a two. Well, an eight with a two makes what? 10. And eight is so happy with a two because that makes 10. Now, that's what you can do with a group of students. What if you're just working with one or two? Could you hide these under checkbook boxes or cups? Right. And the child can play a concentration game. Another type of game could be, let's put up the other bars. And we have to have a five twice, right? And we can cover up these bars. So we uncover the five, right? I uncover it. I've got this one. Now, I take a turn. Maybe I uncover this three. That's not what I want. So the next child can take a turn, or you as the adult. Let's see. Let's just pick one. What if I uncovered the seven? What does seven want? A three. I remember where that three was. It was right here. And so you keep it. So with two children, with one, you can adapt this play concentration game. And another fun thing to do is have the child with all the pieces in front hold up a nine. What is the child going to hold up? Nine wants to be a ten. So from the child's stack, they go and grab a one. If I hold up a six, what, what are you going to hold up? A four. Again, let your imagination be your guide. Of course, with older children, you're going to have to make this a much more sophisticated approach. Let's look at the books and see what happens in our books at this point. This is book four of Edition Facts Mastery. And let's look at page three. Making 10. Six would like to be a 10, but it needs a four. Three would like to be a 10, but it needs a seven. It's written in, and now the child is doing it. Here, the child must identify that this is a four. Four would like to be a 10, but it needs a six. Right. Then if we look at page five, we see that the child gets to match. So here one is done for them. They're showing eight. And eight needs two. Here we have a four. And what would four need to be a 10? Four needs a six. That's this one right here, the matching context. Here we do it with the numerals. Six needs a four. Three needs a seven. And all we're doing is drawing lines. Here we have dominoes. The three is looking for the seven. I'm on page 11 now. A one is looking for a nine. We draw the line and connect it. We do it with dice. This is on pages 12 and 13. We do it with just numbers on the dice. And then we have pictures. Oops. We have pictures showing balloons, where the child will write the number of balloons that are shown and then match it to the number needed. So you see, we're showing that these blocks can represent different items. And we're practicing the want to be a 10 in lots of